in the Engadin Valley, in a place called Saint, which is located not far from the Italian and the Austrian border. And uh, this is the village where I was born, where my family has been living for hundreds of years. And uh, we're in my studio, which has no windows, actually. My work branches out in, in, in many directions. Um, I'm, ba I'm a sculptor, but then I moved on to drawing, also made drawings at the same time. And I've always been interested also in building since I was very young. I don't think that's, that's not atypical if you're from here, because we were, we were kind of isolated in this valley, at the time even more when I was young. And, uh, and I remember like uh, how the first, my first work was maybe more related to trying to build a house or a habitat. And the first one was when I was only three years old. In 1951, it was so much snow that my brother and I, we built a tunnel. And he was the first year at school. I was just three years old, so I could spend a lot of time in this tunnel of snow. And I think that was the, the first time that I realized that uh, I like to build my own habitat. Even though it was much more comfortable to live in the house, I spent the day in the tunnel. I remember exactly how it felt, like it felt like, I remember the light, I remember the, 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 uh, the smell of snow and, um, and uh, it, I just felt, felt great and I felt that this is kind of like mine or, and then of course we, we went on building, building tree houses and, and living in the tree houses and uh, those were moments that I never forgot. And uh, so that's also, that also has been part of my work, trying to build uh, your own habitat. But it, of course, like, uh, sometimes it takes time to arrive at where you want to go, or go back to where we were, where I was. about seven meters, eight meters. This is actually, my studio in Beijing is this high. Uh, the person who built the studio, this architect from Japan, uh, he had completely carte blanche, but he had to be like this height. One thing I really like are multifunctional things. And there are not so many that I know, but one is like, this handrail and the water, water pipe. So that's why this is done here, because you need water over here. At the same time, this is also a handrail. And see, it's an optical illusion. It doesn't look that it's flat, no, but it is. We're making now the seats, you see, like it's going to be... Usually we just sat in the grass or so, but now there's seats here where the grass is uh, growing out of the chair. When I went to Africa, when I went to the Sahara Desert, I kind of s smelled almost, as I said before, like, we're not in Rumansh, you don't go, you don't, like, you smell where you have to go. And, and I knew very little about this place in Africa. But I knew that they were nomadic and semi-nomadic people. And I was interested to see like how would they build a house if they're 
semi-nomadic, and of course it's it's ephemeral. I mean, those buildings go back to to Earth, and so I felt immediately very at home. Uh, it opened up a whole new a new world for me, which became also very important. I'm calling that scarch because it's kind of sculpture and architecture. Because I'm not an architect, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I didn't want to be an architect or study architecture because I would have probably gone in a different direction. Um, so this is what my work is about. If you're an artist, if you're a painter, you need a canvas. If you're a sculptor, you need you need marble or or plaster, uh, and if you build a house, you need a piece of land. And, and that's kind of all related, it's all kind of the same thing. In the 70s, if they would build a building in New York, for example, it was also, you had a space in front of, know, of the bank, whatever, where you could put a sculpture up, like it was like, let's say, uh, Uh, du Buffet or 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 or, uh, or Calder, whatever, right? I mean, you don't have to go up straight with the building anymore. But the sculpt, the, the building becomes a sculpture. In fact, like the CCTV building in Beijing is a sculpture in itself. That means you don't have, you don't need the space in front of it to put a sculpture because it's already a sculpture. That means that the gap between sculpture and architecture is becoming very small. Now most of it is that the, that the architects maybe move towards sculpture more often than sculptors move towards architecture. And I am in that field, I mean in that direction where as a sculptor I move towards architecture simply because I was always interested in building, but also this kind of like, uh, also interested in the material. For example, if you make a sculpture out of marble, or if you make then a big sculpture out of marble, what I said before, like this tower where I excavated the inside, or even further to go into into Patagonia, where I bought this island out of marble, and I went inside. So you didn't even take the block out of the mountain, but you enter the mountain uh, and to make and make your house, make your your your, your habitat. Uh, this is how it evolved by uh, the, the the approach towards the material. And being able to to or now it you know I'm always trying to to go on with it. What what would be the next step? I, I want to go in a direction of completely disappearing, like having I I'm already made a house that disappears or or by remote control it appears and disappears in the in the ground. At that time it was more uh, I was more interested because I wanted and I didn't want something that piece of land. I thought it would be good to have sometimes, but also to have it disappear. I think you need these places like this, where it's like really calming. Like the fish. This is the last piece here. There's going to be two more, but that's it. One has to be not put too much. It's still quite sparse compared to other parks, like I went to Daniel Spurry's park in, in, that's full of it. Really relaxing, no? are the mountains I see from my room. Something that is so close takes longer. No, I mean, I had to show Milan and I said, what should I do? I said, well, I should do what I've been seeing all my life, these mountains.
soup. And then it goes on. Oh, look at the light again. Look how bright it comes. This, is, this piece is called heroin. It's supposed to be covered with heroin. But then it was shown in, in Austria, and you could not bring the heroin there. But in Switzerland, it's not a big problem, I think. So I should actually fill this up with heroin. I think children are, you know, they always find what they want, no? But then, as you grow older, you become more complicated in a way. And so, like, where should I find the right place to be or to build my house? Should it be here? Well, actually, over there would be even better, no? And up here. So you just have to find it. And this is how it works. I mean, uh, why do you go to this island in Tonga? First of all, not why. Right? And second is you just find it. Because like uh, it's the right place. And in Romance, we actually don't look for it, we smell it, but like dogs. You know, why does a dog go there? Probably because he smelled something there, no? And it's the same thing with humans sometimes. If I would live here all the time in this house, I would get used to this, no? You have to be able to also keep distance, not use it too much. That's why going to, to Patagonia or going to, you only go there for a few days, but like every time it's kind of like new, no? And another thing is also quite, kind of amazing is you can stretch time. If you're in, 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 on the island for, for, for five days, it seems like a month. And if you're stand, it's always living in the same place, it's always Saturday somehow, right? <laughs> I've been using always uh, uh, many materials and I remember when I was in New York someone told me that the reason probably why I'm using so many materials is because I have to, I have to speak so many languages. If, if, if we talk about the, the portraits in Niger, in silver, there was something that happened again very fast almost out of the blue, because early in the morning they came to me and said, we have some silver, what do we do? So like you wake up and, and you just have to give them an answer. You said like, okay, I'm coming by at eight o'clock, no, now. So, uh, so I just said, okay, make my portrait. Like the, when I was born, the month, the date, of, the, uh, of the, the day, the month and the year. And from that evolved in a whole uh, uh, and many sculptors. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in numerology, maybe, and I, I, I kind of like numbers, and, and I, I just found that actually, if you look at these portraits, it's somehow related to, to the person that you make, okay? I mean, you make the portrait of Charlie Chaplin and it seems a little bit more funny than the one of, of Mao Zedong. Or like, uh, so, of course, Mao Zedong is very tall, uh, uh, while Jean Genet is born on the 19th of December 1910, maybe. So the top and the bottom is almost the same. So it's this variation which I like. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's different shapes. Chanyaka. Of course they have names. <laughs> no, horse, horse, no. This one is called, this, co this one is called Giotto. And the other one is called Lord. This is a poem by uh, Cohen. He's a, uh, he's a uh, poet from South Korea. 
the world is too vast to live in a single place or three or four. Such a great poet. This is the Rembrandt. This Warhol. Well, it's a little bit of mixture here. Okay. This is the view. This is the out let the outside come in a bit. So this is a small museum. I'm trying to put like artist on each room from a different country. He's from, he is from um, Cuba, Cacho. This is called Camel. Uh, he, I think he has a great story. Um, I was outside of Agadez and I met this silversmith and he had a ring and there was a sphere on his ring. I said, did you make that? He said, yes, who else, right? I said, but can you make like a big one, like a, a melon? He said, but problem, no? And then when he, was, when he said he's able to do this, I thought, how could I transfer this into a sculpture, no? Maybe this already a sculpture. So, um, only by things that surrounded us. So, was, of course, it was sand, we were in the desert, but filling up with sand would not have been that great, no? I couldn't go in, he couldn't go in, but his camel was here. So, let's, let's put a camel inside, said, what problem? So, the next, next day we go to the camel market, we buy a camel, we, we, we kill the camel, cut it up, and put it in here. So, the whole animal is in here. It's all about believing. I guess like you, at one point you decide what you want to work with. It could be this or it could be that. I mean, uh, and for me the animal always, like from the very beginning, played an important part. And we also have all these stories about animals. The people from my village, they're insane, they're donkeys. The people from the next village, they're, they are, uh, are pigs. And the ones from the other village are sheep. And so, and these stories are really great. I mean, it, they even show how the people are. I mean, I go through my town here in Saint, and I really think my, the people in my town are really donkeys. Uh, so it plays apparently an important role. Well, because my, also my, father, my father was a hunter, so uh, there were antlers in the house. Uh, and I looked at them, and I, I remember it was this one antler that he shot in 1952, hanging there, and they were like, it was an eight-pointer, but you always count the side which has most, so in one time, on one side there were four, on the other side there were only three. So I wanted to come up with a word real fast. I mean, I gave myself only less than a minute. What would be four and three on the antlers of my father? And I thought, well, I think it should be fuck you. Uh, and that's probably what also the antler would say to my father. You know, whatever, it's this playfulness that, that I like. I mean, I made also, I, uh, answers where that says Nietzsche or, or uh, it's just showing off somehow. I, I think that humor has to somehow uh, be part of, I mean at least my work, uh, because especially in this land that I live here in Switzerland, uh, we lack of humor. Um, and. Uh, I, I just need it. I, I think it's an essence that I want to, to, to bring into my work. Uh, also, maybe otherwise it could be more boring. I want to show the way, the way I see. Uh, I don't want to change anything. I, 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 I think that by po making portrait of someone, I, uh, first of all, you want to make a portrait that looks like the person. 
Otherwise, there's not much, at least for me, there's not much reason to portrait someone if it doesn't look like the per person which sits in front of you. For a short time, I was in Paris uh, at the university in Vincennes, and there we painted, but a very short moment. We had a model, and then we gave that up. Painting the model and so on. Um, it actually started in Beijing because um, I, had, I have such great assistance and and we the work was moving fast, which I very much liked. There's a completely different work ethic, and it left me time to do something. Uh, because at the time it was not, you didn't want to go out of the studio. The studio is built so that you didn't have to go out. Because if you didn't want to go out because the air was really, really bad at the time. So I spent most of the time in the studio. And then I, I, I just bought a canvas and painted an assistant. And, and, and then I moved from there. I mean, there were always people surrounding me that I, I tried to portrait to, to paint and so I've been painting for uh, I think the first painting was 2008 and uh, it's moving on but I like or what I think lately when I paint is like I, I think a lot of with uh, a lot uh, of Rothko uh, the, the colors, how to put two colors together, but of course this is figurative and this is like the, the new work goes in that direction. I mean actually they have everything in it, you know, they have eyes and noses and everything, but like, and that's great by painting, whatever you put in the canvas stays in the canvas, or, or even though you paint it over but it's still there, right, and layer over layer, and so they become somehow dark, yes, some are quite dark, but that's, or, or, or completely uh, white, but this is where, uh, why I want to concentrate on the, on the head, on the, and basically frontal. It has a lot to do also with light where the light comes, I mean, the light comes almost from within. Um, and you, it's like this opening is by almost entering. So it sucks up the light, but also rejects the light. And it's only, if you look at this too, it's not finished, because it has to be behind glass. That's very important. I mean, it's, it's only finished when it's behind glass, before it's not finished at all. That is like where you have to stand to look at the painting. It embraces, it inflects and reflects, but also it gives a skin and it's just the way it has to be. It's kind of all the same. As I tried to say before, I mean, it's like the approach, Aufbau in German, build up, like it's the same. It's, it's the same approach, it's the same and, but that is something that maybe oh, I'm only aware, not since a long time, by doing maybe different things, that actually how related everything is, you know. Um, but also like by not only making it, but for example also uh, now what we saw this afternoon, like in, in Tarash, how do you put things together, you know? Um, ars una est. Our art is one. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's like uh, 15th century or, or if it's now. I mean, it's all related. Careful here. Maybe this is the center of the world. So this is the organ behind here on three floors. I can't, well, uh, 
<laughs> can you? No. <laughs> uh, I can just, just the sound so you know how it sounds. how it sounds. This is Basquiat. He did this in, in, in 1981. He signed this. Afterwards, he didn't sign his drawings anymore. But it's astronaut. Instead of astronaut, he wrote astronaut for me, you know? I think it's 20, I'm not exactly sure, but it's, I know who it is, of course, but it's, I think it's 25, 25 centimeters, 10, 1883. Picasso. And this is 1599 and this is Velasquez. So if you put, they were on the same level before. And you can see that Velasquez is a bit higher than Picasso. Okay? And I think Picasso would agree with it. Mm -hmm. 